One of Dominici's greatest assets is its potential. Only 1% of the site has been excavated so far. Excavations could last for several decades, assuming that David can raise the money to finance them. No easy task in a country facing serious economic difficulties. Today it's uh, very hard to explain people when they have subsistence problems that countries should fund archaeology, that this is not a parasite work. For Georgia, archaeology, paleontology, it's necessary. This is a science, but at the same time, science is not just for scientists, it's useful. Archaeology will be helpful for country, and it will be helpful for economy, and it will be helpful for the future generations. But Georgia's greatest treasure is now under serious threat. The climate in South Georgia poses a real hazard to fragile fossils exposed to the elements. Today, the site needs to be protected. You can see it belongs not only to Georgia, it has world meaning. So we need to preserve site, which risks to be destroyed by nature or by humans. In 2004, David won a Rolex Award for Enterprise. He plans to build a shelter which will cover the main areas of excavation and allow work to continue throughout the year. Rolex Award is crucial for us at the moment. Rolex Award will enable us to preserve it and at the same time to continue research and as well as try to leave it accessible for public. David's determination to turn cultural heritage into a national asset has been given a boost by his appointment as director of Georgia's State Museum. This former communist institution is home to Georgia's archaeological treasures. But the museum's fortunes have reflected those of the country, and it now faces subsistence problems of its own. In the Soviet time, the museum was the place where main national treasures are stored but it was not very active as exhibition. The Museum of Hamlet changed exhibition since 60. Could you imagine? For David, this is a chance to define Georgia's place in the world. It's a very big luck to get this opportunity to lead, I would say, one of the most important institutions in Georgia. Now, for Georgia, cultural heritage is a national resource, like oil for other countries, right? This could put Georgia on the map, but not only on the geographic map. I would say it has some kind of political importance for the reputation of countries. On peut dire que l'importance de Dominici, on a une très belle collection, on peut voir les. Et il est très petit. Having met with skepticism in 1991, David is now working hard to promote Georgia's scientific standing in the world. Foreign dignitaries like the French ambassador get a personal tour and the chance to see the museum's crown jewels, the original Dominici skulls. I think this is proof of the richness of the cultural and scientific background of Georgia. First of all, we have treasures on a world-class scale, which need to be publicized and appreciated. And secondly, a sense of the very great ability and professionalism of Georgian scientists. This trench that we dug last year exposed 22 meters of sand. David and Reed Ferring are on their way to the village of Orozmani, five miles from the site of Dominici. They're investigating possible new excavation sites, vital to build up a picture of the lifestyles of the prehistoric people. The geology matches the age of Dominici, 
so digging here is a gamble that might pay off. Well, Doctor, it looks like our trench suffered a little bit over the year, but everything we see here and everything on the other, that whole slope on the other side of the valley is just waiting to be explored. That whole green grassy slope are sediments that we're interested in, the same age as Dimenisi. It could be crucial to find another site to reconstruct strategy of subsistence of these people. They moved, they were not only in Dmanisi, they should be somewhere around here. So here could be hundreds of sites. It depends on luck, definitely, but potential is really enormous here. The seasonal climate in Georgia two million years ago meant that there may not have been enough plant food for humans to survive in winter. The Dmanisi people may have needed to move around the landscape in search of meat. David and Reed are looking for evidence of the teamwork needed to do this. Carnivory in this part of the world means you have to work as a group. It's a, it's a team effort, not only for self-defense, but also for acquiring the food, for driving off the other predators that you're competing with. These are tiny people, and there's absolutely no reason why they should survive with Canis etruscus, these big wolves, and the saber-toothed cats, two kinds, etc. Humans survive by their wits and by their group activities, and so I'm confident that in some years the, the detailed picture of what these earliest humans were actually doing is going to be painted with much more detail here in, in this part of Georgia than in any other part of the world. I don't know. It's, it looks like clavicle, but it needs to clean to see it. Back at Dumanisi, the champagne room is giving up its first human bones of the year including what may be a collarbone. Before you will take it from the ground, it will be hard to say. Even this is bigger, but it's still the same length. Skeletal bones are critical to build up a picture of early human anatomy. This is pioneering work, and it's the chance to study bones like these that attract students to work at Dominici. David is anxious to recruit the next generation of Georgian scientists, so he even allows teenagers to come here for a week and try their hands at excavating. If they show promise, they're allowed to stay on as part of the team. I would compare it with football. Big football clubs, they try to make investment in future generations. They are developing their own schools. It's the same here. We should think on our reserves ourselves. When I came here for the first time, I was 13, now I'm 16, so I've been taking part in this project for three years. After I came here, I got to know more about this place. My interest deepened, and I've been here ever since. Every archaeologist dreams of finding something significant. So do I. It would be wonderful to find something significant for humanity. I really believe it will happen. Yeah, it's cold bone. So second human bone today. I was inspired by success. That's why I would like that these young people will see success and it will have influence. The collarbone is one more clue to help decipher the mysteries of Dimenisi. Thanks to the work of David Lord Kipanidze, International attention will continue to focus on this quiet corner of Georgia as it rewrites the story of human evolution. This is very exciting to study past where you have not final answers. So in this case, we're lucky that Manisia brings a lot of questions and answers should come.